But uh, he will normally go out first and he will tell his story. Right? So after that, I basically then will come up and I will say, I'm going to attempt at some point to stop telling you what I'm doing and get into like that mode. And you'll see, if you watch, you'll see where I'll kind of flip the switch and it'll just kind of start, hopefully, hopefully, you never know, hopefully start flowing, all right? So I will come up and I will introduce myself, Dr. Brian Lieberman. Some of you know, some of you I don't know. Um, and uh, tonight I'm going to basically, uh, and recently I've been, I've been starting off with asking people, you know, if I had to ask you something that you know you should do that would overall just improve your life, how you feel, how you function, and how you live, could you come up with something that whether you do it or not, you know if you did, it would do those things. Anybody? Pretend like you're a... Do you just no, that's never what it said. Okay, so he said lose weight. And basically, I, what I'm going to take is free liberty to mean, what you mean is maybe exercise. Does that sound good? Does everybody here understand that if you move on a regular basis, if you do exercise, that your body does better? And in what way does it do better? Is it just that you lose weight? No, what else might happen? You might have better energy. You might sleep better. You might digest food better. You might have better mental clarity. And I say might, it's really not a might. You will. You might also get into a shape that you want to be. Now, the question is, is if you came to the gym because you wanted to lose weight, and this crazy gym owner got up in front of you and said, listen, you might also improve the function of your heart, your digestive system, your sleep, your immune system, would you be mad at him? Which, but that's not what I came here for. I just came to lose weight. So you might actually be thankful that on top of that, you might have these other benefits that come along with it. What else that you probably know of that if you did would improve the performance of your body? Drink more water. Drink more water. What else? More sleep. I'm gonna go with eat better. Okay, I have a very simple, if you guys want to know my nutritional talk, GI equals GI. Anybody know what that means? This is not a tough system. Okay? You would not take your Ferrari and go fill it up with 10%, 90% gas and 10% water, would you? I wouldn't do that with my lawnmower. Would it probably run? Probably. Would it run as well as it can? Would it run to its potential? No. Would it wear out and maybe break down faster if you did that? Yes. The better the food you put in your body, the better your body will perform. I don't, under, I don't know why. I don't know why it was set up that way. Blame God. I didn't do it. For some reason, people who put better food in their body tend to, not always, tend to be healthier than somebody who sits on the couch and eats Cheetos all day. Okay? For some reason, the choices we make seem to have been inherently uh, going hand in hand, for the most part, with how well our bodies perform. So what I want to show you is that exercise and, and nutrition help the body overall function better. Not specific to one thing. Do you need heart disease to benefit from uh, exercise? Do you have to wait till you have obesity to start exercising, to get a benefit from it? No, no matter where you are right now, if you start doing things that help your body improve function, like exercise, you will become healthier, function better, and most likely happier. Chiropractic is another thing that can do that, and that's what I want to explain to you tonight. Chiropractic is not about back pain, it's not about neck pain. Does it help with that? Great side effect. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But I want to take a few minutes to show you this miracle, this body that we have, show you how it works, hopefully 15, 20 minutes, something like that, so that you have a better understanding of how I can help you perform better in life. Not just you, maybe even your family. It's very simple. If I cut my finger right now, what happens? Yeah, a basic cut. Not like I almost cut the thing off, but a basic cut. It bleeds. What happens after it bleeds? It clots. 
So let's go over to clot to stop the bleeding. What happens next? You're what? Scabs. And a week or two later, what does it look like? Back to, a lot of people will say scab. How many times have you cut your fingers? A hundred times in your life? How many scabs do you have on your fingers? The majority of the time, you don't even see a scar. Did anybody here take a class, you know, like Anatomy 101 or something, on how to learn how to heal a cut? If I cut my finger, can you tell me how to heal it? No. Yet it does it in your body all day long, whenever you have them. I love, I happen to, I live on some land, and uh, a lot of times I'm around working on fences or something, and I will go out there, and I'll, end of the day, I'll come in, and I'm, I'm sweating, I'm mess, and I'll look down, and I have blood dripping down my leg. Anybody ever happen to that? So think about what happened. You walk past something, it cuts your leg enough that your body started bleeding. Now, can you imagine if there was no intelligence in your body, what would happen to you? You'd bleed out. Man, I'm so. But thankfully, instilled within you from birth is an intelligence that knows, not only knows that you were cut, but knows how to what? Heal that and repair that cut. And what do I have to do for it to heal? And some people will say band-aids. Band-aids don't cause healing. Do you understand that? What's that? Neosporin. Neosporin. You hear that as well. Neosporin on dead people doesn't heal anything. There's an intelligence within the body. We call it an innate intelligence or inborn. Fancy word for inborn. Means born within. Doesn't have to be learned. That knows how to heal a cut. It takes two cells. This is the sex ed part. Sperm and egg come together, they form one cell. That one cell does what? Most people say multiply. It divides. You guys are gonna fail out of school. <laughs> it divides. That cell becomes two cells. Two become four, eight, 16, up to, I don't know, 70, 100, well, it depends on who you ask. 100 trillion cells in this body, all different, but working together for the common good of you. And at some point, these cells, this one decides, I'm going to be a liver. And so I'm going to be a heart. And I'm going to be a whatever. And the first thing that actually forms is pretty cool. It's the brain and nervous system. It's called the notochord. So I guess they call it the primitive nervous system. And basically, it'll end up looking something like this. This will be the brain. Anybody know what this might become? Spinal cord. Okay? And then these nerves. Come off it all over here. There's 24, 26. You guys know better than me. There's a few of them. Where do those nerves go to? Every organ, every tissue, every cell. That's the kidney, in case you want to know. Not an Okay? Every cell. There's a communication system between this brain and this body that is vitally important. Now, I'll ask a lot of people what controls all healing? In the body. Most of you will see the brain. My question is this. I'm right here, I'm alive. This person is right here. They poor people, they just died. Do they have a brain? Do they have a spinal cord? Do they even have blood in their arteries? If they get a cut, will it heal? No. Why? Because they're dead. And I know that sounds silly, but this thing we call life, see it's a very, here we go, we got these light bulbs up here. Fantastic, right? They're on. If I handed you a light bulb and I said light this up, you would say what? Uh, I can't, <laughs> unless I put it in the ceiling. Okay, if I handed you a wire with it too, and I said light it up, what would you say? You can't, what is it missing? Electricity. See, a wire is absolutely useless without electricity flowing over it. Catch that? This nervous system is useless without life flowing over it. So I know it sounds silly, live, dead, of course they don't, but it's actually the, my entire talk that when life is present, healing occurs. And when life is present at 100%, healing occurs better than if life is 
expressing at less than that. And that's what we're going to show you. See, everything I've talked about so far has nothing to do with chiropractic. This is anatomy and physiology. Do you understand that? This is not chiropractic. I'm going to show you one thing that takes just about everything. Because everybody here knows that their, their cuts heal. The one thing I'm going to show you, eventually, is what makes it chiropractic. Now, very important. This spinal cord is protected by 24 bones. Give or take. Um, the top two are the most important. Okay? Because right here, at the transition between the brain and the spinal cord, is a very important area of the body neurologically, nerve wise. Anybody know what it's called? The brain stem. Brain stem. Okay? The brain stem. 250 million fibers cross right there. Every message that comes to the brain has to pass through there to some, to some extent. That might not be totally true, but it's close enough. All right. Now, that brain stem comes down to somewhere between the first and second, the lower part of it, vertebrae in the upper neck. The first bone in your neck, the top bone up top, they're named numbered C1 through C7. C1 is called Atlas. Who knows what Atlas did in Greek mythology? Held up the world. Guess what your Atlas does? Holds up your world. You live through the interpretation of your life comes from this, this thing right here, this brain. Atlas holds up your world. C2 is called axis because most rotation occurs there. Now, those two bones are very important, and one of the reasons they're very important is because of protection to the lower part of the brainstem. <clears throat> Some people don't know enough about the brainstem, so I'm going to give you a little more information. Who here has heard of Superman? Christopher Reeves. How many people in this room don't know who Christopher Reeves is? Gotta be something. I would actually ask that because I, there's gonna be a day where like kids like, mm, who's this guy? Um, so uh, Christopher Reeves, he was a uh, Superman and uh, an actor, and he was in a horse show, and he was riding his horse and fell off and fractured the second bone in his, in his neck, and that fracture caused pressure at his brainstem. Now, what happened to him? Paralyzed. Most people, that's what they remember, that he couldn't move his arms and legs. Now, here's an important question. This is an aha question. Did he hurt his arms and legs in the accident? So was the problem his arms and legs? No, his arms and legs were perfect. You could put electrical stimulation, they would work perfectly. What happened? There was some form of disconnect between his brain and the muscles that controlled his arms and legs to the point in which he can no longer tell them how to function normally. You catch that? That's important. Because if you understand that, you understand that pressure on the brainstem can cause a loss of function in the body. But more importantly, forget about his arms and legs. What else couldn't he do? He couldn't breathe. Why couldn't he breathe? Did he hurt his lungs? Did he fall and puncture a lung or hurt a lung, and that's why the lungs stopped working? No, what happened? Lost the connection. And I will try to go on until somebody says something about connection. There was some level of disconnect. Not full disconnect. If they had a couple more millimeters, guess what would have happened to him immediately? Dead. There's a lot of people walking around with bullets in their brains. There's not a person walking around with a bullet going through their brains. Then. That's how important it is. But his lungs, which were perfectly functioning lungs before and after the accident, except now there was a, a, a disconnect between the brain communicating to the lung to help to tell it how to expand and contract to the point where he had to have a machine do it from the outside, he had a ventilator. And his organs started failing one at a time. They all started going downhill, why? If you take an apple and you pick it off of the tree, immediately what starts happening to the apple? Immediately. What? It starts to lose life, to start rotting. Because disconnected from its source, its source of life comes through the roots of the tree and out. 
And when you disconnect it from that source, it has no ability to grow anymore, to heal itself. And then he was on antibiotics. He actually died from an infection or from anaphylactic shock from the antibiotic. They had changed it. He was on antibiotics from the day of his accident to the day that he passed. Why? Why would he need to be on antibiotics? What else? What other system wasn't working? His immune system. So what you're telling me right here is that you understand that pressure on this brainstem to some degree can interfere with the communication between the brain and the body and cause the body to function at a lower than normal level. That's chiropractic. Especially up at the upper cervical. If one of these bones misaligns out of its normal position, gets stuck, it, this is the best part. I'm talking, I'm just kidding. Dr. Seekers knows too, that's how I had to do it. Uh, the, the, if one of those misaligns out of its normal position, gets stuck in that misaligned position, it can put pressure onto the nervous system, especially at the brainstem, and cause a disruption, a disconnect, partial, obviously, partial disconnect of the brain trying to communicate with the body for it to perform its appropriate functions to keep you alive and adapting to your environment. That's the actual, that's what health is. Health is you being able to adapt to your environment. So that if you eat something with a lot of sugar, your body produces, your brain just spits out uh, insulin or something like that and it lowers the blood sugar level. Or if you're walking upstairs, your heart starts beating faster because you need more oxygen. That's adaptation. Adaptation is life. That's health. Adaptation is completely determined by the, the nervous system. So if there's a, it's called a subluxation. I sometimes forget to tell you what that is. So, Lots. Asian. I know. Big stupid word nobody can say. A submarine. Subluxation is a misalignment of the spine that interferes with the nervous system. It has to be two parts of it. Because can you have a misalignment and no subluxation? Yeah. Absolutely. I hope so. We're all screwed. I don't usually say screwed. I don't think. Subluxation. But then I learned what the word means. And I thought it was pretty cool. Sub means less than, Asian means a condition of, lost means divine light. A condition of reduced light within the body. That's a cool word. And that's what subluxation does. It robs you of this intelligence being at 100% expressing through your body. Which causes you to be less than 100%. Which causes your adaptation levels to go down to under 100%. Which causes your ability to, to, to deal with anything mentally, physically, and spiritually at a lower level. That's what a subluxation does. A lot bigger than a strip, a crick, or a strain, or a backache. Not belittling any of that. Many of you might have come in for that. That's why I do this right up front. So we have, you know what I'm about, and you can decide if you want to be in this office. This office isn't for everybody. I know that. I understand that. But if you understand this, and you decide to be in this office, we are very good at what we do. One of, the, one of the main reasons we're good at what we do is we don't do anything else. I want to be a chiropractor. I don't want to be a nutritionist. I don't want to be your exercise physiologist. If you want a suggestion, you want me to give you a little advice, I could possibly do that. But I want to be a chiropractor. And I want you to understand the importance of having a chiropractor on your team to try to maintain function, wellness, health, and, and prosperity throughout a lifetime. Oops, I said it. How long do you think you should be on the chiropractic? How long do you think I think at least you should be on the chiropractic care? What? The rest of your life. Oh, 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 here it goes. Oh, he just wants me to be the rest of my life. Oh, once you go, you have to keep coming back. If I was a gym owner and you decided you want to come work out in my gym and I explained to you what you know working out does, and you said, Well, how long should I do that for? And I said, I don't know, get in shape for a year and stop. That should be good. You'd think I was an idiot. Or if I was a nutritionist and I said, hey, eat well till you feel better, stop eating well. You think I'm an idiot. I'm not gonna look like an idiot. I think you should maintain this connection from birth till death. Speaking of birth, I just gave away the answer. Where do you think the number one, the first subluxation generally occurs? At birth. Who here has kids, right? If I walked in to the delivery room and five seconds after your doctor delivered your baby, and I did exactly what the doctor did to your baby's head and neck, what would you do to me? Oh, You'd beat the crap out of me, rightfully so. Why? Because innately, you have an understanding that this neck, you don't even know why, you didn't know why before tonight, but you knew it was important. You knew some serious stuff goes on up here. 
If you hand off a baby and his arm flops, anybody really care? Not a big deal, but what do you make sure you do? Support the head and neck. And this guy, your OB just came in and used it like a pull toy. That's why I had home births. So we have a midwife to assist in the, the birth of my child, not deliver my child. We do a lot of things in birth and Rome. I'm not going to go through all of them right now. But one of the worst is grabbing a baby by its head, turning it, and pulling. You'd never let me do that. You think that might possibly be able to cause some type of a problem or misalignment at the upper neck? Just possibly? It does. It's called birth trauma. Today it's called normal birth. That's why we check kids from birth. As a matter of fact, today, really today, I'm waiting on a call from a, a pregnant mom who when she delivers, she's going to call so we can go check that baby. Doesn't mean they'll be subluxated, but we'll go check that baby. I just brought up the word check. That's important. In our office, you don't come in to be adjusted. You come in to be checked. Checked for what? Subluxation. Exactly. Checked for subluxation. Walking through my front door is not a criteria for getting adjusted in this office. We have our own criteria. We look at leg length, leg raising, temperature side to side, before and after, every time if we have to adjust. To check to see if you're subluxated. If you are subluxated, we will do an adjustment. Not a pop, not a crack, I know that's funny, but a specific adjustment to try to remove pressure from that nervous system to allow you to function closer to 100%. And if you knew and got to see what I saw on a daily basis, you'd put a little more reverence on that. Like this kid Caleb, right? I always ask, is anybody from Pepper, this, this kid's father is the head coach of the football team and football is everything up in North Georgia. Well, Camden, from six months of age to four years old, had uncontrollable seizures. Eight medications, every expert, medical expert in the tri-state area. Multiple seizures a day, so many medications and seizures that he basically was almost lifeless. Could barely walk at four, could barely talk at four. He was in occupational therapy, physical therapy, and speech therapy. Eight medications. He had an appointment to be evaluated to see if they wanted to do a frontal lobotomy on the child to try to help control the seizures. I didn't know either. That apparently is one of the ways that they try to control seizures when they're that bad. Now, Camden's aunt had been a patient in my office for a while, her and her kids. They brought in their kid Avery because if he took three steps, he couldn't breathe, he would cough all day long. Couldn't play, couldn't do anything at three and a half years old, four years of age. Came in. Got checked, adjusted his atlas, top horn in the neck, took pressure off, the body started healing. Now, do I know how to fix asthma problems? Not a clue. I have no idea. But you know what does? Life, the intelligence in that body. That innate intelligence does know. My job is to take pressure off to allow it to do. That's called a return to normal function. Avery's cousin is Camden. And Avery's mom had been telling Camden's mom for a year, you should bring him to chiropractor. But she was a self-proclaimed, such a skeptic of what it was we did. How could a chiropractor, a back pain doctor, help my child who has been to every specialist in this area and is under the best care that they know? So she did it for a minute. And after a year or so, the aunt was fed up with it and they asked her to pick up uh, Camden one day from school help them out, so she brought them over. <laughs> now, I will check any kid without parental consent. I will not adjust them. You want to sue me? Go for it. Check the kid, scans, subluxate. Aunt picks up the phone, calls the house, mom, the dad answers, thankfully, because I don't know what the mom would have said. Said, I'm at Dr. Brian's office, can I let him adjust Camden? He said, yes, thank God. That was a Tuesday. Took this activator, put it on his left atlas. I had a huge protocol. Clear as day, I heard left atlas. Pulled the trigger. Cam didn't have a seizure. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, on Friday. I told mom to bring him back on Friday. 
He came in on Friday, I checked him, and he was clear. Guess what I did? Nothing. Next morning, Camden's mom comes in to something just like this, our doctor's report, and I go through it, and at the end of it she says, I'll think about it. I, that's how I felt too. First time in your kid's life basically hasn't had a seizure for more than hours, that's okay. I love you, absolutely. The, two, the kid didn't have a seizure for two weeks. At two week mark, he had a seizure, and guess what she did? No, she came back in. To her credit, thank God, she brought him back in. Now fast forward three years and I'll show them the magazine, they did a whole write up on him, him playing t-ball. Normal kid. When you see that, I put a little more reverence on an adjustment, not popping a crack in this kid. We have stories all over the wall, just like that. Equally as impressive. Do I know how to fix seizures? Not a clue. As a matter of fact, Avery's, uh, Camden's cousin Avery had a left atlas as well. What was it causing in him? Breathing difficulties. In Camden, it was causing seizures. In you, it might be headaches. In somebody else, it might be weakened immune system, chronic colds, ear infection. I don't know. I'm not here to treat the symptom. That's a medical route. My job, to remove interference to that which created you to allow for a restoration or a closer restoration to normality and healing within that person. And that's what we do in this office. I'd love to have you in the office. I'd love to take care of you. Don't make any bones about it. I don't need you to be in the office. This is the busiest office in Northwest Georgia by far. That's not bragging. We don't advertise. 80% of our office is referrals. We're just good at what we do and we stay focused on what we're doing. I'm not gonna sell you backpacks or, 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 or school supplies. Or we'll do physical therapy, that's not my job. My job is to reconnect you. Make sure that the brain is communicating with the body and to do that for the rest of your life. If you choose to do that, that's awesome. If you don't, I love you either way. That's why I do this now, so you can make an educated decision on whether you want to do that. After this, we're going to go back. If I took x-rays on you, I'm going to show you x-rays. The most important one I'm going to show you is where you open the mouth so you can see those top two bones in the neck. I almost forgot to tell you, the most important thing in our office, if we check you and you are not Subluxated, we call that clear. That is the goal of this office. My ultimate goal is for you to hold an adjustment longer and longer. Why? That's where the magic happens. If you're so used to the pill does this. I want to remove interference and allow it for normalcy. When there is no interference, your body's in the state it needs to be to be communicating and healing properly. That's the goal. I want to get you to a point where you at least hold an adjustment longer than 10 minutes. We have people who go 13 weeks, I have a kid who went 13 weeks, I had an adult who tried jumping around and went 13 weeks without needing an adjustment. Got checked every other week, but went 13 weeks without needing an adjustment. That's not the normal. Most of my people I check once a week. Most people I check once a week and I want to do that for the rest of their lives. Hopefully now you understand why. Not because I need your money or want your money, just of course there's an exchange, don't get me wrong. But I know what can happen if we can start kids off clear and connected. How different our community would look if we had more and more people walking around clear and connected. And that's why we do what we do. Questions for me. That's where I have my, my options for.